Today you're going to learn exactly how you can express yourself fully, be who you really are, unleash your authentic self, no longer be afraid of other people's judgments or opinions, truly be who you were meant to be, and finally stop feeling like you can't express yourself. But before we get into that, I just want to let you know that you can win a free copy of my book that's actually only available to my high level students in my programs, but you can win it by dropping a comment down below saying winning. Just drop a comment saying winning and you'll be entered to win and we pick three winners every month. So you might get lucky. Be sure to enter by dropping that comment. Also, give a thumbs up. Let me know that you've done it. And also give me an upvote for the algorithms. Helps me out. I appreciate it. Now, the first thing that we have to look at when you aren't able to be authentic and express yourself, when you're struggling, what's really happening is you're feeling like something is stuck. And this is really important because we have to look at the emotion that's associated with the thought. So if you think about expressing yourself or if you think about saying what you want to say and you can't seem to do it, if you can't seem to be 100% authentic, then usually there is an emotion and it's like something is trapped. And it's a physical sensation usually too. For me, I had extreme social anxiety and it was in my throat, it was in my chest. You know, it kind of get like tight. I wouldn't be able to really say what I wanted to say. I would start overthinking. But that feeling was really, really important for me. You see, when you start to feel that feeling of being stuck, what usually happens is you get paralyzed. So you stop thinking rationally. Now all of a sudden everything around you is a threat and often you'll almost go into like fight or flight and you're afraid of how people might judge you. And this doesn't have to even be with somebody in person. This could even be over social media or voice messages or any form of communication, emails, right? You have something to say, you want to say something, you want to express yourself, but it's like it's just not going through and it's not connecting and it's not, you're not able to really allow it to flow out and you trap yourself. And what really is happening is you are trying to think your way out of it. And this is a huge mistake because the moment you start trying to think your way out of a feeling problem, you trap yourself even further into the problem. So now your mind starts spinning, you start overanalyzing everything, you're looking at how somebody else is perceiving you. Usually what we go into is micromanaging other people's perception of us. Like we can really control their thoughts. Listen, you can probably barely control your own thoughts, right? It's just, it's the truth. Most of us struggle to even think what we wanna think. There's just a bunch of random stuff going on up there and you're not even in charge of that. And now you're telling me you're gonna manage what somebody else is thinking of you and you're going to go out of your way and do things to try to make them feel the right way about you. See, that's what paralyzes you and you can't do that. Now you can influence it to some degree, right? You can show up, you can be yourself, you can be confident, you can you know, try to provide value, be a nice person, those things are all great. But ultimately, somebody could just be having a bad day and decide that you're an asshole and they don't like you, no matter what you do. You could be really offering so much good energy, you could be having fun, and somebody might not like you. Be okay with it. Be okay with people not liking you. You see, the moment that you do become okay with people not liking you, you create an opportunity to actually express yourself because not being able to express yourself is typically connected very heavily, by the way, like a chain, to trying to make people perceive you the right way, being afraid that they won't perceive you the right way. And what happens is as you're trying to micro manipulate the outcome and the way that they perceive you, you get paralyzed and you start losing your ability to influence them. You retract, you start to fear, you go into scarcity, you're no longer open and free and abundant, you're worried, 
you know, what's gonna happen next? What if other people don't like me? And then that leads to other stuff. Now, this happens to high level people, right? Entrepreneurs that I work with all over the world, I've seen this. I've seen this happen to somebody who is just starting out in their career, they start to you know, put out content online or do something like that and then it gets scary. But I've also seen it happen to high level CEOs, people that are running multi eight figure businesses and then all of a sudden they just get trapped and caught up in their minds. And everything is like, oh, well, what if my assistant thinks this and what if the CEO and what if this happens and I don't know, uh, what am I supposed to say here? It's like, relax, you're the boss. Even people who are like all the way up and they're crushing it and they're at the top of their game, still sometimes struggle with this. So point being, don't be so hard on yourself. It's okay to not be able to express yourself fully all the time. It's great that you're even working on that skill and getting better and improving it. So give yourself a little bit of a pat on the shoulder for that in and of itself. It's really important. A little bit of self love is going to go a long way. It's going to help you out. So how would you act or behave if there was no judgment? If there was no judgment, if you had no fear of judgment, how would you show up? What would you do differently? What would change about you? Be honest with yourself. Would you still try to make everybody like you? If there was no judgment, if you could just do whatever you wanted to and get away with it, you'd probably say some things you might be afraid to say right now, maybe to some people that are close to you. I know I did, and it was important. Because if you don't express yourself, you're hurting yourself, but you're also hurting them. And here's why. Most people don't realize that in one way, it's unethical to hold back. Because what you're doing is you're not directly lying, right? You're not twisting or telling something that isn't true or twisting the truth. However, you are withholding information. You are withholding how you truly feel. And I'd say that's pretty bad in and of itself. So think about it this way. The more you hold back, the more you try to pretend, the more you don't express yourself, you're not doing anyone any favors because you're not being your true self. And so people are treating you based on the way that you're acting. And if you're acting in fear of judgment, then you're going to perpetuate that reality and your life will continue in that same vein, that same pattern will dominate and rule over you and make it impossible for you to feel happy and fulfilled and chase what you want and do what you love, enjoy your day. You'll be trapped. You'll be stuck. Your mental faculties are all busy trying to handle this shit. So, you know, please make a decision to act as if you would without judgment. How would you act if there was no judgment? We'll do that. Don't wait. It's never good. There is no day where it will be perfect timing for you, right? Wherever you are right now, whatever is going on in the world, whatever you want to say to somebody, whatever you know is the truth, say it, just do it. Here's why. What's the worst thing that can happen? Really genuinely, what is the worst thing that can happen? Let's say, you know, you get some flashback, right? backlash, <laughs> you get my point. Somebody is hurt or upset. Somebody starts attacking you. Somebody cuts you out of their life. What's the worst thing that can happen? Will you still wake up tomorrow? Will you still be alive? Probably, you know, will things still be okay? Will you find new people? If that person leaves your life and it's no longer a part of it, here's the upside though. On the other hand, maybe that person accepts you for you. Maybe you drop your mask. Maybe you stop trying to pretend to be someone that you're not. And all of a sudden you feel this whew, relief, right? It's like this heavy backpack comes off. All of a sudden you've got a little more energy. There's that, you know, sparkle in the eye comes back. You're excited for life. You're enjoying yourself again. You're no longer just like, oh, God, come on, got to hold it in and pretend to be someone I'm not. All of a sudden it's like, huh. I'm relaxed. I can be me. Hmm. I don't have to pretend anymore. How awesome is that? How great is it to be able to really be who you are 
and no longer hide and pretend and try to coat and mask and cover up. It's a huge relief. It's worth it. The trade-off is worth it. Look at the risk. Look at the potential gain. The risk is relatively low. The gain, the potential for gain, is very, very high. So, chances are, the more you express yourself, the more you'll just have an upwards growth curve like this. That's it. The more you express yourself, the more you are who you are, the more you perpetuate yourself being authentic, the better you become, the more expressive you are. It's self-perpetuating and it continues, 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 and it never stops. I've been doing this, man, I used to have such severe social anxiety, right? I would hold back and try to, I was so careful. Any word that came out of my mouth, I would have had to think about it 400 times in my head before I said it. And then I just started saying how I felt and being honest and being authentic. And yeah, sure, some people left. And sure, I pissed some people off, but it was worth it. I'm glad I pissed those people off. It's a great trade-off to become my authentic self. Do you think it would be worth it to become your authentic self if you upset someone? It's worth it. It's worth the price tag because the upside is so massive. Maybe not right away. Maybe in the beginning you'll say, oh, well, it wasn't worth it because this person upset and da da da. But in the long run, don't look at what happens the next day. Look at what happens in the next three years of your life. That's where I want your mind, not just what happens tomorrow. Okay? That's really important. Think long term, not just about what happens right now. Usually what will happen right now is better anyway, too. So, kind of win win if you really think about it. Now, what you have to do is you have to create opportunities to express yourself. See, many people, is they, they wait, right? That's the problem. Waiting for a chance, waiting for the right moment, waiting for something to finally come up, right? Now I have the chance, now I have a shot, now I can do it. And that's part of the chain. Because you're trapping yourself by saying, one day. Once this happens, then I can finally, no, today, call somebody you haven't talked to in a while. Tell them how you feel. Be yourself. Be honest. Ask them how they're doing, right? And then just get into it. Somebody in your family, somebody you've been wanting to say something to for a while. Do it today. Don't put it off. Create the opportunity. Pick up the phone. You know, if you can meet in person, if they're close to you, great, whatever. But one way or another, don't use distance as an excuse or the current situation in the world as an excuse. Just do it anyway. Do it anyway. Create the opportunity one way or another. Just do it in a way that's obviously safe and smart. You know, don't put yourself in danger. You know, don't go confronting people on the street. There's rational fear and irrational fear. This is what you have to really understand. Rational fear is, you know, if I go <laughs> to some bad corner of the street to some nasty part of town, walk up to a couple of guys that have guns on them and just say, hey, I want to tell you I don't like that you're walking around with guns. And you know what? You guys are assholes. You know, that's, that's maybe not the smartest. There's a rational fear that you probably shouldn't go and just cause a ruckus. However, <laughs> if it's irrational, power through it. You don't want to speak up to your mother your sister, your father, your brother, your friend, your teammates. Tell them. Tell them, hey, here's what I really think. I don't know why I've been holding back. I should have just told you earlier. And then guess what? You don't have to say it in the worst way possible. You can still be authentic and tactical. You don't have to just blurt it out and then hope that it's received well. You can spend a little bit of time just going, okay, what's the best way to say this? Without overthinking, right? Maybe give yourself two, three minutes max. Put on the timer. Five minutes, how am I gonna say it the best way possible? Something like this. Okay, go. That's it. Because otherwise you'll just spiral and start thinking and use that as an excuse and I don't want that for you. That's really important. So, rational or irrational? If it's irrational fear, push through, do it. Quick little recap here. Something is stuck. Become aware of that feeling 
Embrace that feeling. Don't try to get rid of it. It's okay that it's there. You don't need to get rid of it. You can still express yourself even though it's there. And then it goes away. It's not once I get rid of this, then I can express myself. It's I express myself and during that process, this will go away. Then trying to think your way out, huge trap. Don't do it. You will fail and stay trapped forever and the chains will remain on. So please don't do that to yourself. And then you have to act the way you would without judgment. So be authentic, be yourself. At the same time, calculate in a little bit of, okay, what's a good way to say this? But without trying to manipulate them to perceive you the right way, but rather so that you can communicate effectively. It has a different intention. You see that? The intention matters greatly. Two people can do the same thing, but one person does it out of greed and desper you know, desperation, and the other person does it out of honor and courage, bravery, right? purpose, passion, it's different. The result will be completely different, even though they're taking the same action. So make sure you have that right intention. It's really key. Then finally, create opportunities. Don't wait. Do not hesitate. Go and address it now. Create the opportunity to connect with someone so that you can do it, so that you can express yourself. No excuses. No BS, no reasons for why you can't do it. Only reasons for why you know you should and then do it. This is huge. Finally, I hope that you've enjoyed this. Make sure to let me know if you did. And also just want to quickly announce that there are a few spots open to have a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me. If you want to be a part of my high level program, all you have to do is go to eraphael.com, put in your name and email, and then it'll take you to the booking page. There you'll be able to sign up for a one-on-one -on -one call. We'll talk, we'll see if it's a good fit. I'll show you some big picture strategy and overview of what I think you should be doing to take your life to the next level, to really become a 10 out of 10. And if it's a good fit, then we can also work together in the long run inside the program with a bunch of awesome people, a great community. I look forward to seeing you there. So go sign up for that call, eraphael.com. Oh, and before I forget, Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you turn on the notification bell. I really do appreciate it. I hope that you're enjoying this content. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next one.